we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed well my topic is I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord at all times. Let me start from Psalm 34. I read the verse 1 and 2. Psalm 34, 1 and 2. I will restore the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Verse 2. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. I will glory in the Lord. So that the afflicted will hear and rejoice. There are some who are under some challenges in one way or the other. But David is saying that I saw the Lord and he delivered me. I'll bless him at all times. His praise will continually be on my lips. So that the afflicted will hear and rejoice. And have some hope that you also be delivered. Hallelujah. Blessing the Lord is no problem. Or praising the Lord is no problem. We, want, we tend to praise God. Adoring him and extolling him is something that we do. But doing it at all times is the challenge. See, sometimes you wake up in the morning and the news you hear does not generate that kind of praise in your spirit. But this man is saying that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. So I will bless the Lord in the morning, bless him in the afternoon, bless him uh, in between time, bless him in the evening, bless him at night, bless him at dawn. His praise will continually be in my mouth. So he will not open his mouth and say anything that is not praiseworthy. In fact, the Apostle Paul says that if even in our thinking, we should try and think about things that are praiseworthy. When your thought is fixed on things that are praiseworthy, when you open your mouth, his praise will be in your lips. But trying that kind of discipline is not easy. I will bless the Lord. I will stall him at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. I want to make this important statement, brothers and sisters, that praise is a choice. You can decide to praise or otherwise. You can decide to complain. Your mouth is your mouth. Your mind is your mind. And so you can decide to let out anything that you want to let it out. Sometimes we hear people saying that it is my own mouth. Yeah. And James is saying that even though it is your own mouth, praise and curse should not flow from that same mouth. He says that is not right. And so you can praise, you can curse, you can say anything to the ears of God. But David is saying that I've made a choice. That I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. You see, the end of year retreat is also an end of year thanksgiving. Maybe we have to qualify it well. End of year thanksgiving and retreat. So that we come here to thank God. <laughs> we are not just going to wait for 31st before we say, Wama mengu, wama meni mengu, I say. Uti we so we. So start singing and warm yourself into 31st night. Because God has been so good to us. So I want you to uh, bless the Lord. And let his praise be in your mouth all the time. You see, praise, I said, is a choice. Praise is a sacrifice. Now, so sometimes you can hear some bad news. And then the praise is, is not forthcoming. But don't open your mouth and say anything contrary to praise. The Bible said of Job that in spite of all that Job went through, he just still said, God, I bless you. He bowed down and he worshiped God. Nothing evil proceeded out of his mouth. He didn't charge for God for any wrongdoing. He blessed the Lord. And that one was enough blow 
to the enemy. He came back. He said, no, I didn't succeed. This time, let me, let me touch his body. And yet, he still didn't succeed. When the wife saw that he was still making obeisance to God, he said, are you still worshiping God? I thought you would curse God and die. But Job will not curse God and die. We will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in our mouth. When Pastor Nyami was leading us in the devotion, he said that we should at all times put our trust in God, even when the situation is difficult. Anytime we stop seeking God, you, you will crash. Yeah, he said it, and I wrote it down. If we stop trusting God and seeking him, you will crash. Let us also not stop praising God, because that one too, we can crash. So praise is a choice. Praise is a sacrifice. So when the situation does not generate the kind of praise, yet you have to praise God, then you have to sacrifice a praise. That is why the psalmist said, we bring sacrifice of praise into your house. Because sometimes the environment will not be too conducive for you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. But we need to praise God. Praise is an attitude. Praise is an attitude. It's an attitude of gratitude to the almighty God. Attitude of gratitude to the almighty God. And it is better for all of us to cultivate this attitude of gratitude to God. Um, I was following one, this woman, many years ago. We were living at North Canisia, I think around 84 then, so we had come to Carnation Market to buy something. Then, because we, our house in Carnation Market is just a walking distance, so we came to the market. But before we could leave the place, we saw this woman complaining, and I actually went to her because she was kind of disgusted. She was annoyed with herself. And when I got closer, she was trying to fix a chalavote. And I said, Mommy met me a boy and then she started lamenting. And that the witches from her home do not give her peace at all. They don't even want me to work. I'm just rushing to go and do this job and look at what they have done to me. What have they done to her? They've caused the chalote uh, the <laughs> just to pull out. And, and she was so disgusted. And then she kept talking, talking, talking. So I went close. I realized that she was struggling to fix this because she was so angry. Mommy, 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 and finally, mom. Then she said, if you have a phone, put my name in my name. In fact, I'll wait to you. If you crowd yourself with a fear before, any little thing, you'll be operating from that perspective and you cannot be grateful to God. Please, let us know that God is a good God. God is a good God. Let us fill our thought and our mouth with good things. Let us bless the Lord at all times. I have heard Someone who has just stumbled. The person fell and the person never woke up. You, you stumbled and your chalote is the, uh, has affected you in town God. You must always find a good way of counting your blessings, not your curses. Let us try and bless the Lord at all times. Now, praise is an understanding. Praise is an, a certain understanding that the Lord is God. Full stop. Praise is understanding that the Lord is God and that God is a good God. God is, the Lord is God and that he is a good God. So I've said that praise is a choice. Praise is what again? A sacrifice. Praise is what? An attitude. And praise is an understanding that the Lord is God and that he is a good God. For in him we live, we move and have our being. 
As long as we have our being, it is because God is with us and that we are doing that through him. See, there's no lack of subject for praise. Now, when it comes to praise, there's no lack of subject. His loving kindness is an unending thing that can occupy the whole morning. His faithfulness can occupy us the whole night. If you have to dwell on God's faithfulness the whole night, you will not finish. Talking about how faithful God has been to you and to us as a church. And when we want to talk about his loving kindness, it will occupy your whole day. God is a good God. There is no lack of subject of praise at all. See, in a day like this, it is befitting that we give thanks to God. The maker for 2023. We need to thank God for this year, 2023. Despite what we are going through. Now, when you want to reflect on a year, if all of us have to do a reflection, you realize that the feeling will vary depending on how you measure it. Some got promoted this year, but others were not. Some gave birth to children. Others might have lost one. Some married this year. But a good friend of mine died this year, leaving the wife a widow. Mm. A sibling might have passed to glory, or a spouse might have gone to be with the Lord. A major health challenge might have struck you. Conversely, some got married, others were miraculously healed. One might have experienced some re reduction in finances. But you see, someone too is here blessing God for financial breakthrough. So what do we do? No matter what happened to you, the righteous requirement of you is to thank God. For the scripture says that give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will concerning you in Christ Jesus. So it doesn't matter how you measure the year. The righteous requirement concerning you and the divine one, of course, is that no matter your situation, scripture says that give thanks. Give thanks. So David was smart when he said, I will bless the Lord at all times, whether good times or bad times, because it is required of me to give thanks unto the Lord. Praise is a sacrifice. It is an attitude. It is a certain kind of understanding that the Lord is God. Praise is a choice. Now, sometimes, all may not go well with you, like I've said, but we need to praise God. We need a certain kind of attitude and understanding. I'll just go through some hundred, some hundred, um, quickly. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And the verse 3 says that, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and in his cause we praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Praise his name. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. He is not just faithful to you. His faithfulness will transcend your generation. To your children and your children and your children's children. That is who God is. Say, know that the Lord, he is God. And that the Lord, he is good. We are his. He created us. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continue to be in my mouth. See, praise is powerful. Because God inhabits in the praise of his people. When you fill your mouth with praise, it is powerful. Um, many years ago, 
There was this young man who wanted to marry a certain lady. But somehow, after working very hard for the requirements, the in-law decided to outsmart this young man. So instead of giving the lady he requested, the in-law decided to give the senior sister rather. This young man was not pleased. He went to the in-law and complained. And then the in-law said that, if you really want this one, then you need to work again. So another seven years he lived. And then he got this one that he loved. There, was a di there were differences between the two of them, temperamental and all that. But see, physically, the younger one was much more beautiful than the other one. How do I know? I was not there. But the Bible says that, now, if the Bible says, now, because we always talk about the bright eye, that is a, an expression for beauty. And the reason why he chose the younger over the senior also has so many implications. But now, listen, let's go to Genesis 29. 31. Genesis 29, 31. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive. But Rahel, or Rachel, remained childless. Now, so look at how God is trying to balance the equation. He saw that this big sister is not loved. And you can't blame Jacob. Because that was not a choice. So God said that, okay, I'll close this one's uh, womb and open this one. Then, so let's see what really happened. 32. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. So Reuben means that because the Lord has seen my misery. So when you say Reuben, it means something else. It means that now my husband has seen my misery and now he will love me. But it didn't happen the way she thought. The husband didn't necessarily love her because of Reuben, no. Let's go to verse 33. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I'm not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. So Simeon means that one who is not loved. Simeon, Trema, Equitiabo, Equitiadi, all this Equitiadi will still not solve the problem. So let's take the next verse. Again, she conceived. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, Now at last, my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. So he was named Levi or Lewi. In fact, the way the Cree pronounce it is the proper pronunciation of this name, Lewi. And now, or if you want the English, uh, Levi. Eh? So whatever you want. But at least, this is number three. It says, because God has given me a third, now my husband will love me and it didn't happen. So if she likes, she can even go ten. Nothing will change. Yeah. But now let's go to 35. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, This time, I'll praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. This time, I'll praise the Lord. I want you to decide like Leah decided. That this time, instead of being a complainant, 
praise the Lord. Yeah. This time, I'll praise the Lord. Now, but listen. And she stopped giving birth, full stop. I think that God wanted this woman to have ended here. But something happened. Now the sister was struggling, not having a child. So the sister decided that she has made seven. So she will give one to be married to the husband. So that the husband can, through the maid servant, have a charge for her. And so she had one, two, and then Leah said, hey, me too. I'll give my maid servant <laughs> so that my husband will give me some children. But all the children that Jacob had, Leah's own, by Rachel's own, if you put them together, none stood out like Judah. None. And out of Judah came the savior of the whole world. You may never know what is going to come out of your praise in the midst of difficulty. Now, complaining and fighting your husband will not solve any problem. Naming your children's name and then saying all kinds of things will not solve any problem. This time, let us praise the Lord. Let us dwell on the good things that the Lord has done for us. Let us try and count our blessings, not our curses. We cannot have it all. No, it doesn't happen like that. In life, you don't have it all. Sometimes you see somebody in a very big, wonderful car. And then you wish, say, And then, Let them come out of their car. Let them tell you their problems. Now, let us count our blessings, not our curses. And from today, I want to encourage all of us, let us praise God. Let us try and bless the Lord at all times. His praise, let it be continually be on our lips. For after all, one day we'll be gone. But let us trust God, like our brother said. Let us follow up the trust by blessing the Lord at all times. Let his praise be continually be on our lips. When we bless him, something good will come out of the blessing. And then blessing the Lord or thanking him is a good sign of maturity. Colossians 2, verse 6. I want you to project that for me. Colossians 2, verse 6. It shows that you are mature. Are we there? So we'll read. Shall we read together? So then, just as you receive Christ as Lord, continue to in him, verse 7. Shall we shout verse 7? Rooted and built up in him. So one is rooted. You are built up in him. Move on. Strengthen in faith as you were taught. So people can have strong faith even to cast out demons. But look at how he ended. And overflowing with thanksgiving. So you may be rooted. You may be built up. You may be strong in faith. You may be whatever. But you see, what really proves that you are mature is when you are flowing with thanksgiving. When you are rooted, nobody will know how deep your root is. But speak and let us see. When I was in Kofodi, I was torn between making this young man an elder or a deacon. The, the pastor presented him as uh, an elder. And I thought that, oh, this young man, can he be an elder? Why don't we make him a deacon? And then he graduates up to the eldership. But the pastor was trying to justify uh, the reason. He's saying that this man is, this guy is matured. So I asked the pastor to see me the next day. So I managed and then got this young man. You know what I did? I just conversed with him. Because if he's mature, I'll pick it from his mouth. Just converse. So, hello, how are you? And so, have you been going to your hometown? And so, it's been a while. I said, why? 
Let's go and visit your hometown. Where is your mom? Oh, my mom is dead. Oh, it's fine. So why? I don't have anybody. Yeah. And so that one was enough for me. This one must stay at the king. If somebody who is afraid of her baby for her. So I, I didn't have to go and take his CV. I only had to converse with him. Let me hear what is going to come out of his mouth, whether he's mature or not. Now, if you are always complaining, it doesn't matter how much you have. Even people who don't have money will ridicule you. Now, when you are doing that, you make God sad. And you also depress your own spirit. Lift your soul, David says. My soul, why are you so downcast? If the soul is downcast because of the thinking of the soul. But when the soul thinks right and the soul begins to lift God up, the soul will also be lifted and your faith will be strengthened. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Shall we rise and roar and bless the name of the Lord? Open your mouth. Lay back on the Bahatinimikosa Dayanda Bah.